The Beatles get back. Well, well, well. Oh, well. I think that sums it up. And also to another quote from John, confirmed an old suspicion it's good to be alive. I mean, can you imagine if any of us Beatles fans had passed away Wednesday of last week? Uh, would have been absolutely tragic. As it is, we can, it's a monumental, it has a monumental place on any Beatles fans bucket list and now we can gloriously tick it off. We've seen it, well, we've seen nearly eight hours. We can watch it again and again at our, to our heart's desire. We've got the allure, possibly, of a DVD and Blu-ray coming out next year with a maybe extended footage. Peter Jackson says there's an 18-hour director's cut. He was saying Disney says there's no market for this and they never do director's cuts for their movies. Well, I think there's definitely a market and us Beatles fans should put pressure on Disney to, to, um, by speaking out here and saying we want it because I, I think Doctor Who, uh, sorry, not Doctor Who, and Doctor Who fans and Beatles fans in common, they're pretty obsessive about um, what they love and they welcome any, any bonus footage. Um, and so I, I think there would be a market for it. And I'd certainly be willing to fork out a small fortune for the 18 hour version. Um, I strongly advise you to watch an excellent podcast with, where Peter Jackson does a, um, an interview with, on the Things We'd Said Today channel led by Ken Michaels. He's literally talking for more than three and a half hours about the Get Back project mainly and it's just fascinating. Um, he's being very generous towards Lindsay Hogg saying that this documentary is not supposed to supersede or replace his film, m more or less a, a compliment to it. And it's a documentary on the making of Lindsay Hogg's film because you can see in the documentary here that we have presented, Lindsay Hogg is desperately trying to get the Beatles to do this, that and the other together with McCartney that those two are pushing it and you know whilst it can be a little bit annoying at times if those two hadn't been pushing it maybe nothing would have come out of it so um, okay some of the ideas of um, um you know going to Libya and performing on a boat were a bit crazy but um, and one is still not sure who came up with the idea of the roof but it's just a glorious um, I think uh, Bob Woofenden said it best in his book that the rooftop concert is one of the Beatles' loony but lovable stunts or something like that. Um, and not so loony, actually. It was very, very clever and uh, very well filmed here. We see the rooftop in its entirety, entirety in episode three. It's, it is quite exhaustive uh, watching. I didn't watch it all in one go. I watched episode one Friday, episode two Saturday, episode three Sunday night. Um, and I'll probably go back to it again shortly and rewatch it and, and see I'm sure lots of other stuff I didn't see before. Um, I think uh, if I was to pick out a few highlights, um, the Commonwealth song which I had on this bootleg just came in a pli plain white sleeve actually with this uh, Sweet Apple tracks. Um, that was on there and but to see the Beatles performing it visually is just a treat. Uh, two of us um, in Jamaican voices is hilarious and um, by the way just before I forget to mention the reason that Lindsay Hogg's film is not condemned to the dustbin of history is because it doesn't Jackson's movie for example doesn't include the finished performance of two of us let it be or long and, one, long and winding road so for that reason alone the two need the two versions need to come out side by side next year in the blu-ray um, okay so just thought I'd point that out um, there's a great uh, scene at the beginning at Twickenham where there's a Harry Krishna guy in the corner and John said who's that little old man and Paul sort of looks up and said don't know but he's very clean though which is a reference to Hard Day's Night um, Paul trying to get John to sing the harmony vocal on the middle eight of I've Got a Feeling John's trying it and obviously cannot hit those high notes that's hilarious George leaving is is not an enjoyable watch, but it's historically very interesting. And John was Paul's discussion in the canteen the following Monday, where a flower pot had a bugged microphone in there, and um, they picked up the conversation. And uh, John saying that there's a, this has been a festering wound for George, and we didn't even give him any bandages yesterday. That, that, so that's very in interesting to hear. Uh, the third man theme performed at Twickenham, which I had on, on this record, Philander Beatles. So I listened to it as a joy to listen to, and but to see the Beatles perform it at Twickenham was just an absolute highlight. There's so many, it's just ridiculous. Uh, the Monday after John, 
John, sorry, is it Monday, I think, after George leaves and John is late. So it's just Paul and Ringo sitting around with Linda and Michael, Lindsay Hogg, maybe a couple of others. And um, at one stage, Paul just says, and then there were two. And then the camera pans on Paul and he's just sitting there chewing his nail and looking absolutely crestfallen. And there's almost tears in his eyes. It's heartbreaking to see, uh, very moving. In fact, I didn't think there'd be much good footage from Twickenham, but there really is. It's, it's a revelation. Heather McCartney was a star in the original movie, and she's a star here. There's a lot of footage from uh, the Family Sunday on, in the original movie, and there's, there's quite a bit more in this, because Jackson literally donates about 20 minutes to each day, which is great. Uh, George Martin is a lot keener on this project, especially towards the end, than history would have us know. Um, He's really getting quite enthused, saying you guys have really got it together and you're doing, you're gelling well. Glenn Johns is a revelation. He's superb throughout. He deserves a lot of credit. He put in all the donkey work as the engineer on these sessions. Uh, Billy Preston, tangible increase in the mood, uh, not in just in terms of the Beatles smiling, but musically. I mean, in terms of his contributions. Two, I've got a feeling, don't let me down and get back in particular, just superb. Mal Evans, the faithful roadie, is great. And uh, trying to play the anvil on Maxwell, trying, can't keep a beat to save his life, but there we go. Uh, all four Beatles really shine throughout. You really get to know them as people. Their clothes are sort of period pieces, 60s psychedelia. This was, you know, only a year after the Summer of Love, after all. And the, the White Album was still number one in the charts while they were making this. So it's historically a beautiful documentary. It's very, very, I'm very glad to have watched it and I look forward to watching it again and again and again. Thank you for watching. See you next time.